Welcome back to The Evil Within. Now, a couple of weeks ago, we covered grinding for every single achievement in the base game, except for two, Master of Horror, and of course, you asked for it. Today, that is exactly what we tackle with this behemoth of a challenge. Now, for those of you that don't know, you asked for it is for completing the game on Akumu difficulty. Now, Akumu difficulty is easily one of the hardest challenges that I have ever grinded for, in which any damage, no matter what, will insta-kill you. If a haunted hits you, dead. If you stand on a bear trap, dead. Absolutely anything, dead. And not only that, but the levels are filled with more enemies and more mini bosses that would appear on later in the game. And, and, because that's not hard enough, enemies are also smarter, faster, and have incredible perception. So, we really have our work cut out for us today, as going for this achievement absolutely broke me. Both mentally, physically, emotionally, spiritually, all of the lees. However, before we get started, I do recommend that if you haven't yet, go and watch my first part on The Evil Within, as in that video, I give you all of the wonderful context that I won't be able to give today in terms of story and setting. But enough dilly-dallying, as we go for the hardest achievement that we have ever gone for on this channel so far. Welcome to the achievement grind. Now, we're just going to get straight into it. So, thankfully, at the start of the game, it is casual and it is fine. It's mostly set up as we step inside of the hospital and go about our business in the investigation. We go to the CCTV, Ruvik stabs us, and we wake up in front of the sadist. Now, for this part, I wasn't too worried, as the sadist insta-kills you anyway, so dealing with this wasn't that bad at all. And having just gone through this game twice through, I was already feeling confident. We hopped our way through the stage fairly easily until once again we meet the sadist. Now again, here, I was feeling it. I knew how to deal with this section and it was fairly easy. Well, it was on any other difficulty, as another thing that Akumu mode does is throw a bunch of extra obstacles in the way. Now I have to get the sadist to clear the path to sneak past. Normally this section is just a simple walkthrough, but now I have to actually use my brain to get past him, and I hate using my brain. We died a lot, literally stumbling at the first hurdle, but getting fed up with being carved in half, we took it slower and steadier, and thankfully made it into the lift. Even though it didn't take us that long, I got a horrible sense of foreboding here. However, the intro plays, and we got a small taste of the nightmare that was about to come. And with that, we completed chapter one. Only 14 more to go. Now we just carry on through the level. We make our way through Tatiana's safe, room out of the ambulance and take care of the police officer thankfully with ease. Now not to get too cocky too soon but I was dealing with the haunted brilliantly. Having already gone through the game twice it gave me a wonderful understanding of timing and the sneaky ways that I could use the environment to kill. For example the haunted here instantly spotted me and with no ammo I blew up one with a trip mine and burned the second by lighting a spare body on fire. However the game then decided to very quickly humble me. The next section I had no ammo and had to deal with a small horde of the haunted. Now, this wouldn't be too bad, but I could not deal with one haunted without having the rest sprint to me to investigate. And since their perception was insane, I couldn't sneak up on them either, as whenever I got close, they'd turn around last minute and slap me into the afterlife. Of course, that's when I didn't blow myself up. This section was my first true taste of the Akumu experience, as since I got so used to the gameplay from before, it took me a while to adapt to the way that Akumu expects you to play, and this threw me and threw me hard. I honestly died here 20 times easily, but with a slower pace, some well-placed bottle throws, bombs, torches, we got through, after many, many deaths. It was then a short hop, skip and jump to the end of the next chapter. Now, starting chapter 3, I was slightly nervous about this part. Even though it's the section where you get the shotgun and the agony bolts, I knew it was going to be tough from the sheer amount of enemies and, of course, the sadist miniboss that we have to face. But like the brave little eggs we are, we slowly started to work our way through killing the haunted that dare get in our way and, honestly, this part shocked me as we seem to be getting through fairly easily. I mean, by the time that we picked up the shotgun, the bow, and got some keys and whatnot, we had only died twice. But now it's time to face the sadist himself, so I knew that this number was about to soar. Except it wasn't, because we killed him first time. I think at this point, I was a little more accustomed to how to play Akumu and started to get my pacing and my timing down much better, but even with the additional enemies and Ruvik's clone, it only took us two deaths, so I ended chapter three feeling fantastic. Now, before we carry on for this run, when it comes to upgrading Sebastian with your gel, I focused on two specific parts first. Sprint, because Sebastian can run for about as long as an asthmatic ant with some heavy shopping, so I knew for some later parts that I would really need to rely 
on my ability to sprint. But we also upgraded the critical chance hit percentage for the pistol, as if you fully upgrade this, the pistol then becomes a broken weapon, as I found out during my speedrun. With this fully upgraded, a headshot has a 50% chance to insta-kill, and this turned the normal haunted from being scary intimidating creatures to nothing more than a minor inconvenience. So when we upgraded, this is what we spent our money on. Chapter 4 went by fairly quick to start with. We killed him and his brother, collected keys before finding Leslie in the basement. We took out the invisible enemy fairly easily as well, thankfully, and carried on. As you know, Ruvik appears, we chase him and end up in a room which did make me a little nervous as you have to fight a lot of enemies in a very small room whilst also trying to avoid the jam that slows you down and makes you an easy target. Also, for Akuma, of course, there was also an extra Ruvik clone in here as well. Now, of course, in this section, we died quite a bit from unlucky hits to Laura's hands grabbing me. But then I found this room here. Now, this room is simply fantastic, as if you climb this ladder, it forces the haunted into a single file formation, which makes them easy hitting, as when they climb the ladder, one by one, we make our headshots and they're almost guaranteed. Once I found this room, I took out the Ruvik clone as soon as I could, got up into this spot, chucked a grenade that mulched the poor bastards beneath it, and for those that survived, we shot them as they climbed. It really made this section easy, and I think I cleared this section with maybe five or six deaths, well below what I was expecting. So with my morale still high, we moved through to the Laura section, which was again easy as all it is is a short run through a scary looking sections until we reached the staircase that Ruvik sends us screaming down for the end of chapter 4. But before I get too cocky, let's continue. Now we have to deal with rooms of the invisible haunted on our way to rescue Joseph. I did get hit and killed a couple of times, but for the most part, we expertly removed the brain matter from the hollow's haunted heads. We rescued Joseph from his milk bath and pressed on. Now again, the rest of the level went by fairly stress-free, but I remembered what room was coming up ahead. And this room filled me with fear, the saw trap. Now, I died here a couple of times, of course, but mostly it was from my own stupid decisions that killed me, like shooting a sprinted haunted with a bomb, turning myself into a neat collection of gristle. And this is a great time to show an example of the power that the pistol headshots can hold, as this made the room so much easier. Like here, Joseph is getting picked on by a gang. So with three bullets, I had three heads explode. In this moment, I knew I made the right call with my upgrades. But I got straight back to shooting folks until bizarrely, Joseph said, I think that's it. It's time to go to the control panel to free Kidman. So I put on my best running shoes and Faith sprinted past the haunted until I reached the panel. I already knew the code, so I interrupted useless fecking Joseph and him and Kidman both hold themselves. This next section, again, was fairly easy. Run through the rooms, kill a couple of creatures until you room that Joseph and Kidman are inside, hollow out some more skulls, get past the door, and then get kidnapped by Laura again. Fairly simple. But when we woke up, it was now time to face the first Laura boss battle. Now, for this, I wasn't too worried. Laura is an insta-kill anyway, so the difficulty didn't really affect the fight that much. And again, for this fight, I didn't die anywhere near as much as I expected to, as it was a very nice rinse and repeat. Burn her with a furnace, and then burn her with a body. She did get me a couple of times, I can't lie, but nothing that I was too worried about. She keeled over eventually and with that the chapter was over and already like that we are a third of the way through however earlier when i said things were going well well chapter six is here and chapter six is where this truly turned into a nightmare we started by meeting up with Joseph again and protecting him as he disarms the bomb doors here and on the level below. So we can't take a single hit and we also need to protect him. Oh god, this is going to be fun. And yeah, this was much more painful than I was expecting. Random hits, bad barrel shooting, anything that stopped my momentum would result in my death and having to do the entire section over again. So my tactics were the same here that they were for the speedrun. Kill the first couple of haunted and once three into the room, run them around in circles. And even though this didn't work every time, time and was stressful as hell, this was the easiest way to deal with the rooms. But something then happened, something that I never would have expected. On the second door whilst I was training the haunted, Joseph told me the words that I was dying to hear, that the door was open. I immediately panicked and sprinted to the door with a haunted hot behind me. For a moment, I knew I'd made a mistake and that my death was close, but Joseph took the hit from me and sacrificed himself for the greater good. I was deliriously happy with this. Out my way, out my way, out my way, out my way, please! No, he took- <laughs> he, he saved my life! <laughs> and for the first time I've ever seen, Joseph did something good. And now, I love him. But now, it's time to take out the four boxes with a sniper, and then move on to the next Sadis fight. I would happily do the previous rooms ten times in a row over again, than this bit. This part 
was an absolute nightmare and pushed me to my wits end. I swear to god this bit was pure torture. So gaining the sniper rifle and getting to the next checkpoint wasn't an issue at all, but once the boxes started firing, my depression suddenly grew fierce, as this part took me hours. I had very little ammo, Joseph went back to being a useless bellend, and every part of the map was thin, littered with harpoons, and if not harpoons, swarms of haunted would run at me from both sides. Death by death my patience ran thinner, and with each death I tried to learn more, and more for a clear path or a way to go about doing this. Eventually I realised that the bridge was a death trap, guaranteed death if you stay up there, and sometimes it wasn't even my death as if Joseph fell off, it would be more or less impossible for me to rescue him, therefore death. So the plan so far was, we spawn, snipe the first haunted, run up, snipe the second haunted, run down, snipe the third, and then turn back the way we came from the right hand side of the map so I could pick up more sniper ammo and snipe the last and final box before sprinting to the mini boss. Sounds simple right? It was not. I died here nearly a hundred times. I could not seem to catch a break, and I was honestly ready to give up for the night and try again another day. However, I gave it one last go. Now this time, I had managed to kill all four boxes, which was amazing. All I had to do now was kill the remaining haunted and head to the boss. Oh, so I thought, because as I turned to hit the haunted, the door closed and the sadist is released and finally I get a checkpoint. As you can tell, my brain was scrambled and only one word could be formed due to my excitement. Checkpoint! Checkpoint! I, 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 a checkpoint! Now, even though I was horrendously under-equipped for the Sadist fight, I didn't care. I was so happy to beat the last section that the Sadist could squeeze me like a dog toy and I would thank him for it. But we got to killing. I don't know how I managed it, but like the first time, he went down first try. And I never have to deal with this stupid, awful section ever again. Chapter 6 is regarded as pretty much everybody's most hated and worst chapter, and I can tell why. This part was so unforgiving, but my lord when I say that the serotonin flooded like a wave after beating the sadist, that would be an understatement. I was ready to fight god. So with that we needed to finish the rest of the chapter because it isn't over yet. Next, Joseph gets kidnapped. We save him and protect him whilst he opens the door. Now the problem is I had barely any ammo, but someone from my chat reminded me of a cheesy little cheeky moment. If I stand on this plank in a particular spot, the haunted can't run past you and more importantly, they can't actually hit you. Stand here and then when Joseph opens the door, you run through. Simple. However, now we have to fight the twins again that protect the church. Honestly, the first went down easy as anything. However, the second was an absolute unit and just ran into you turning you into a wonderful bright and vivid mist well when i wasn't randomly exploding that is now i used all four of my brain cells in this moment and decided that hiding like a coward was the best way forward hiding under this statue thingy and then when the twin turns his back rattle him up a little bit joseph was once again useless but by using some patience we slowly chipped away and killed them both honestly i just wanted this chapter done the next big boss that we fought because this chapter doesn't have enough difficult points was the fluffy boy he thankfully wasn't too tricky and after a couple of attempts we put the evil devil bastard dug down also collecting Joseph's stupid glasses again. My god, I hate Joseph. But we entered the church and finally put this nightmare of a chapter behind us. Now, thankfully, I knew chapter 7 was going to be a dream. I knew how to play this as best as I could, so I ran through fairly quickly, killing enemies and collecting the three stone slabs that needed to unlock the door to the Keeper's lair. Once in there, we rescued Leslie again before Mr. Keeper makes his appearance. But since I knew what we were doing thanks to the kill him only twice achievement from the last video, I thought this was going to be fairly easy. And thankfully, the evil within Lords threw me a bone and we went through without a single problem. We killed him twice, avoided him and dodged our way through into the final section where we gave his brain case a good old-fashioned crushing. It only took us about 40 minutes to complete this section so I was very thankful that we got to carry on quickly to chapter 8. And the same with chapter 8, I was fairly certain it would be an easier chapter. The chapter itself is very short and there honestly isn't that many moments where enemies can get the better of you. We started in the cave, quickly kill our way through the level. The only part that I thought might be tricky was where the baby mutant rat things rain on you whilst you're trying to open the door. However, if you look above you can actually take them out whilst they're grouped together waiting and a single shotgun bullet can take most of them out. So we carried on through the water, the trap door and into the room where we are then chased down by a very angry pup. We sprint into the safe room, Rubik appears and just like that we're on to chapter 9. 
And thankfully, Chapter 9, I can't lie to you again, was fairly easy for me. Since I'd just done a speeder of the game, I knew where to go, what part of the brains to probe, and the codes to the safes without having to stop and get slowed down. Now, the best part is that since I was so quick with getting all of the info, Ruvik only chased us down once, and within maybe five minutes and no deaths, we had opened up the main manor door and was ready to chase down Leslie and Jimenez again. We then get all of Ruvik's backstory, as well as the encounter with Ant-Man, who we just outrun throughout all the sections before before we quickly find ourselves in the barn once again where Laura died and Ruvik got burnt. Now, I think this game was trying to make up for the shit show that was chapter 6, but again, this part was fairly easy, as with my cracking pistol, when Ant-Man showed up to release the haunted, we would kill them more or less before they even had a chance to stand up. So, he found Laura's body quickly, and then vanished. We find ourselves in the manor again, go behind a door, and complete chapter 9. Now, chapter 10 is where things started to get tricky again. First, we had to power the merry-go-round doors to the next section, and this is where we are given many enemies who can shoot guns, which made it much trickier, as if you miss a shot and a shotgun-wielding maniac is sprinting towards you, well, you know, it's probably not going to end in your favour. It did take us a little while, I just needed a little bit of patience, but nothing that we haven't already dealt with, so we cracked on. In the next room, once again, we had to turn on the electricity. Now, the hordes of haunted running towards me did freak me out, but thankfully, they died rather quickly. We turn on the power and get ready to deal with trauma, but a well-placed freeze bolt and some good timing made this easy. Now, the next room had two traumas inside, as well as a couple of guards. Since this was in closer quarters, this part was trickier. However, with the same tactic we just used on the earlier trauma, I load them into a smaller room, froze them, and then laid a Goldilocks trail of shock bolts to keep them at bay whilst I opened the door. Again, this gave me just enough time to slip past them. Now for the Laura boss, I was so, so confident. We knew about the cheesy method to kill her, and we knew the best way to get through, so I was so happy and confident going into this. However, I was wrong. This boss was a fecking nightmare. I assumed it because of the difficulty increase, but Laura was so much faster and used her abilities a lot more often, making her hard to hit and slow down. But with that information, we did start to the first section of the furnace, where I was reintroduced to bear trap. Now, oh boy, do I have a bit to say about these bear traps, and they are the one aspect of this mode that I absolutely hated and that were horrendously unnecessary. The floor in all of these rooms are littered with insta-kill bear traps. Honestly, they are not needed. I think they're just a way for you to die a couple of times to annoy you into thinking that the level is harder than it is, which is ridiculous because the Laura fight is hard enough, and every time I died to one of these bear traps, it just annoyed me, and I felt like it was a really, really cheap way to make the level harder. Like, I understand this is the hardest game mode, but just throwing needless bear traps into a level to make it seem harder just wasn't it for me and just really got on my nerves. But what kept me going is knowing that if I get her to the pipe of endless fire, life would be good and the boss would be done. Just getting there was the hard part. But eventually, we got to the sweet spot, shot the pipe, and Laura died from the fire. Problem solved. Oh... Not gonna lie, that nearly tipped me over the edge, from someone who has a working PC system to somebody who has a lovely pile of destroyed metal. But now, I suppose, we know the bear trap is there, we just have to make it back to that moment and burn her again. Problem solved. This broke me. This absolutely broke me, to the point where I was done for the day. But... I'm a champion, and Akumu is my bitch, so we got back into it. And thankfully, Laura didn't cheat, we didn't bear trap ourselves, so we killed her, nicked her a goo, and left. We carried on, met the Amalgam Alpha again, and thankfully he was so much easier to deal with. A couple of shots to the eye, a couple of grenades, and a bit of ammo later, he erupted into his final form, dead. And we got into the lift, finally ending this nightmare of a chapter as well, that I honestly didn't think would be painful in the slightest. But alas, we continue. Chapter 11 wasn't as bad, thankfully. The only part that really hurt after this was the electric door bit, and that was only because there were way more SMG guys that just sprayed bullets, and one would always hit and kill you. Every time, no matter what the distance. However, ending with a couple of shots of Magnum did make it much easier. I wished I honestly used it earlier to save some time, but I tried to save the bullets for later. And I know a lot of people struggled at this gondola crane bit here, but honestly, I don't know how I got through it in my second time. One shot would kill them or make them fall off the edge, so as long as I was quick, we were fine. The rest of the section was easy as hell as we saved Kidman, went through the gas room easily, 
and made it to Joseph on the bus ready for chapter 12. Again like the normal run this part was easy. Heresy was easy enough to knock off the bus and when we got to the ambush part I let Kidman and Joseph do most of the shooting until the way ahead was clear and we were ready to carry on. Heresy smashed his way into not breathing and Joseph got shot so now it's time to get the anti bullet juice again and save this worthless horrible existence of a human. Now to get to the ambulance was fine-ish, I died a couple of times but once I got there the real pain began as I didn't realise that I had used every single last piece of ammo to get there. I only had three scrap pieces of metal and that made this next part absolutely brutal. And honestly, I thought the run was dead here, as if you peeked out of cover even slightly the minigun would tear you to shreds and my one explosive bolt wouldn't activate and kill the turret enjoyer, so I was genuinely clueless on what I could possibly do here and I actually started to get quite annoyed, I can't lie. But then I thought of a different method. By getting the turret to destroy the cars I could move closer and closer, then instead of crafting an explosive bolt I could craft a light bolt, blind the user and then get to the gun myself. It didn't work that well at first but the next time I did it I got my hands on the gun and shredded the rage and the hate that I had built up into every haunted that dare approach after that. We killed them all, I got back to the bus and we rode into chapter 13. Now honestly there is nothing to really note in this chapter, it's all the same grinding throughout the level. Once I reached this first couple of rooms, pain that I never knew of would come to haunt me. This part absolutely broke me again. We need to kill every enemy in this section so that we have enough time to turn off the acid trap and make our way down the floors. However the problem was that I had barely any ammo, all of the enemies had guns and bulletproof masks and I could not sneak up on them, like it was physically impossible to do so and this drove me mad. I died here easily 50-60 times minimum and lost many many brain cells. I could just not seem to catch a break at all. I would get shot, blown up, slapped over and over again until one time I had enough and decided to use more of my magnum. I also got insanely lucky with a couple of matches that really helped me save on ammo. I undid the acid trap and launched myself into the next checkpoint. Honestly, the rest of the chapter was easy, including the keeper room, and not before long we also finished chapter 13 and was only two more chapters to go before we have this beautiful achievement. Chapter 14 was surprisingly easy. We died a couple of times of course, but we made our way through the level with a certain style of ease. Only part that took me a minute was a train bit with the carriage of the bombs, but again fairly decent to handle. We did so well that not before long we actually found ourselves in front of the quell boss and ready to put this fecker down. We froze him, gave him all of the magnum bullets that we'd been saving and then did a couple of extra shots and finally put his nail in the coffin. We only died twice here and that was such a good feeling as now we were on the final chapter and moments away from finishing this nightmare experience. Now the start of chapter 15 is again extremely easy as it's just running from point to point until we get to the room of eyes. Now the room did make me a bit nervous as it spawns a hell of a lot of haunted. Yes we died here a couple of times but honestly with being careful where I stood, the amount of ammo that it gives you and making sure I was shooting priority targets, we slowly worked our way through the horde until the sadist opened the door to the next part and snuffed it alongside his haunted friends. We got through on our third try and this honestly again really surprised me a lot and also along the way we found more magnum bullets which was phenomenal as I knew we was about to have to deal with two beefy keepers next but with magnum bullets we reduced them quickly into a fine paste and just like that within 20 minutes we are at the final boss fight. Now once again, I feel like this is the easiest boss fight in the game as all it is is a couple of QTEs strung together. So we first hop in the car and shoot his brain until he then knocks us into the barbed wire. We rocket him in the brain a couple more times and then when he gets bored of that he goes in for the final bite. However, a shot to the heart puts Ruvik down once again and at this point, I know I've done it. We stomp on Ruvik's brain, skip the cutscene and like magic, we unlock Master of Horror and thankfully and finally you asked for it. Honestly, the relief and pride that radiated through my body then was immense. This is truly one of the hardest gaming challenges that I have ever tried, and the feeling of beating this difficulty is just immense. We cleared Akumu mode in 13 hours with 338 deaths. Now, even though this was a nightmare and several parts had me absolutely molding, it was also actually really fun. Well, besides the feckin' bear traps. I don't know how something so difficult could be so enjoyable at the same time, but I guess completing hard challenges and difficulties gives you a great sense of, well, achievement. So if you have ever thought about doing a Kumu for yourself, expect pain. Pain and suffering is guaranteed, but honestly, also expect a great time as well. 
This forces you to use your brain, think of solutions, and how to overcome insanely tricky moments. So when you do so, it feels fantastic. So yeah, I absolutely would recommend this to a friend or foe. However, the stats for the Evil Within won't be shown until the end of the final part of the Evil Within, which is going to be covering all of the three DLCs and won't be ready for a couple more weeks. However, for next week's video, we take a trip back down memory lane. Get your best running shoes on, folks, as we cover the first console achievement grind and a personal favourite game of mine during the 360 days. I am, of course, talking about the parkour masterpiece that is Mirror's Edge. From what I remember, this game is truly an amazing masterpiece and a game like no other. But how will it fare 14 years later? Well, you'll have to find out in next week's achievement grind. But that's all from me today. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed my pain and suffering. I really, really do. Please don't forget to like and subscribe as it makes the pain and suffering more than worth it. And I cannot thank you enough for the support that you lovely lot are leaving on the channel. And feel free to swing by my Twitch where of course you can catch these grinds live as well. But again, thank you all so much for watching. Have a great evening. Take care. Bye-bye for now.